Jada and Stitches show. It's time for part two of the canvas build for our 2019 folk art calendar blanket. Today we are going to finish off the dark green section by laddering in the light green and then finishing off the entire thing with the beautiful sky blue. So far our blanket measures 36 inches wide by 48 inches tall or 90 centimeters wide by 120 centimeters tall. If you are using a DK or a double knitting weight yarn, your blanket is going to be a little smaller than mine. Same thing if your tension is a bit tighter, your blanket dimensions might be smaller than what I've just said, or if you have a looser tension or your yarn is a little thicker than mine, then your dimensions might be a little bit bigger. It doesn't matter. <laughs> if you want your blanket to be bigger at the end of this project, we will be adding quite a funky border. So you can add a little bit of border or a whole lot of border. We're going to leave it entirely up to you, but this is definitely an opportunity for you to add in sizing. But we're going to do that at the end of the project. The most important thing you want to keep in mind is a consistency of sizing throughout. So whatever yarn and hook you started this project with, you want to use the same thing throughout. That will ensure that all of your pieces will size properly and your blanket will look perfect when we're done. So, <laughs> let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we're going to head on over to the craft table and we will finish canvas build part two of our 2019 folk art calendar blanket together. shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. In order to make part two of the canvas build for our 2019 calendar blanket, you need your blanket. You are halfway through your dark green strip, so you should not have cut your yarn. You should still have your dark green yarn attached. Here it is down here. You need your light green yarn and your light blue yarn now. And each of these balls of yarn is approximately 198 grams or around 350 yards each. You need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle. We're using the same hook. It's a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a nine, or a five in the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, take a moment to click that button and the bell so you never miss another episode, especially of our 2019 calendar blanket. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. When we last left off, we'd done 10 rows of solid double crochet back and forth, back and forth of our dark green section. So we're not done with the dark green yet. We are going to ease back into building this blanket. We're going to work six more rows right off the top of just straight old double crochet. So every row begins with a chain three. That chain three counts as a double crochet. Because it counts, we do not use that first stitch. We instead find the next one double crochet into that, and double crochet in each stitch all the way across. Including the chain three at the beginning of every row, you will have 108 stitches in each row. So work six more rows of this dark green in double crochet, <laughs> and I will see you at the end of what will be row number 16 of the dark green section. Just nearing the end of the 16th row of the dark green section. This is also 46, so row 46 of the blanket. Remember that you're going to use your chain threes as a double crochet, so don't forget to work the last stitch of each row into the top of that chain three. All right, so that's 108 stitches in each row. We just worked six more rows on top of the 10 we already had in the green section. So we've got 16 solid rows of green. Here we go. We're going to chain three to begin. So it starts looking fairly familiar. <laughs> You're going to work a regular double crochet into the first 72 stitches. So that chain three counts as a double crochet. And then the next, so for 72 stitches in total, so after your chain three, 71 more double crochet. Work the first 72 stitches of this row, row number 17, in your dark green double crochet. Once you get across to the 72nd stitch, you should have 36 stitches left, including the top of your chain three, which you'll use at the end of this row. You're going to just pull up briefly on your dark green, grab your light green yarn. So we're going to start transitioning here. 
We're going to make a slip knot with our light green yarn. Don't make it too tight. You want to have a little bit of wiggle room there. Take it back off your hook momentarily. Put your hook back into your green yarn. You can put your light green yarn on your hook now. You're going to drop the dark green yarn, so just let it fall to the back of the blanket. And now treating this list <laughs> slip knot like a wrap, we're going to begin a double crochet in the next stitch. So we're using the light green now, we're transitioning to the light green. So you're going to pick up a loop. Your slip knot counts as a loop. You're going to pull back through those two and then wrap and pull back through the last two. And that includes the dark green loop. If you have to tug on that dark green stitch just a little bit so that you don't have a much of a gap there, remember you're going to use that stitch when you come back to it. Now I'm going to work over top of my short tail, but for the next 35 stitches, so that was number 70. Three, there are 35 stitches left now in the row. You're going to work a double crochet in the light green color now into the rest of the stitches in this row. Don't forget to work your last stitch into the top of the chain three when you get to the end. All right, and there's our first little transition of color between dark green and light green. That's 36 stitches of light green. Your last stitch is worked into the top of your chain three. You're going to chain three, turn. This is the 18th row of the technically the green section, the dark green section, but we are changing it up a little bit here. This chain three counts as a double crochet. You're going to begin to double crochet in the next stitch, remember. You're going to work the first 45 stitches of this row in the light green color, but as we get close to the color transition, I'm going to catch up with you there and show you what it looks like. All right, there's the first 35 of our 45 light green stitches. Remember that little tiny odd sort of stitch I told you about where if you pulled this green a little bit tighter it would make it smaller. We're, that is a stitch so we don't want to miss that. That is stitch number 36 right there between the dark and the light green double crochet from the previous row. So there's 36 of the light green stitches. Now we need to work nine more but we want to carry our dark green yarn. So we're going to work our stitches over top of the dark green yarn. So I'm just going to pull it up and out of the way so that you can see where I'm about to work my next stitch, which is obviously right here. I'm working over top of the dark green yarn. And once you've made that stitch, just pull gently on that dark green yarn just to tighten it up, make it nice and neat, and you will not see this yarn getting carried. So that's number, what is that, 37, 38. We got to get up to 45. Work those last nine remaining stitches over top of your dark green yarn so that it's ready to use when we switch back. All right, at stitch number 45, you're going to drop your light green yarn. You're going to pick up your dark green yarn and give it a little tug if you need to. That will make sure it's running smoothly underneath all of your stitches. So you see that you can't see any extra yarn there. So you're going to drop the, the light green yarn and you're going to work the rest of the row using your dark green yarn. So we're transitioning back to dark green. We're not working over top of our light green yarn, so just let it fall to the back. You're just going to work the rest of the row using your dark green yarn, and you can do the same thing we did before. You can grab your light green, just tighten it up a little bit. Don't make it too tight because you still need to be able to see that stitch to use it. And work the remaining uh, what do we have here? We have 63 stitches in total in dark green for this row. After our light green to dark green transition, that gives us 63 stitches in the dark green. When you get to the end of your row, chain three, turn your work. That chain three counts as a double crochet and the first 54 stitches, or exactly half the row, will be in dark green. 
So after your chain three, that's 53 more double crochet in dark green. I'll see you halfway across. All right, we are 54 stitches or halfway across the 19th row of the dark green section. We're going to transition back to light green for the rest of this row. And we're going to do what we call a little cheat carry. <laughs> you're going to take your light green yarn and you're going to pull it across to the bottom of your last stitch, not too tightly. And you can sort of hold it there with one of your fingers. Give yourself a little bit of slack you're going to drop your dark green yarn you're going to make a wrap with your regular so make a, a wrap around your hook with the light green yarn and work a double crochet so if you see that I've twisted it here so what I've done is I'm kind of holding the yarn I'm twisting it around but I'm going to pull it so that I can work a stitch over top of that light green yarn nice and loose first half second half of the stitch you can take that dark green get your fingers on it there give it a bit of a tug to pull it back don't make it disappear though you still need to see it and now you can work the rest of your row in light green just work over top of that light green yarn and it will disappear into the rest of the row. Nice and neat and tidy. So the next or the last 54 stitches, the other half of the 19th row or the 49th row of the blanket. So 19th row of the dark green section, 49th row of the blanket. The rest of it is worked in the light green as we're transitioning here between the two colors. And I'll see you at the end of the row. So that's the end of row 49. You should still have 108 stitches in each row. Row 50, we begin with a chain three. We're using our light green yarn. Row 50 will be the last time we use the dark green here in this canvas. You're gonna work the first 63 stitches. So your chain three counts. So after your chain three, another 60 to 62 stitches in the light green. And then we're gonna transition back to dark green. So as we did before, we're gonna, don't miss that stitch in here. So where there's that little transition, don't miss putting a stitch in there. That would be stitch number 54. You've got nine more stitches to work in the light green. We're gonna work over top of the dark green yarn so we can carry it. So just pull it back and out of the way. Work that first stitch over top of it. Give it a little tug and then you're going to keep it underneath running along the top of your row here as you work over top of it so we can carry that dark green yarn and have it ready to go when we want to start with the transition. So 63 stitches in total of light green. All right, there we are. That's stitch number 63. We're going to drop our light green, pick up our dark green, you should have 45 stitches left in this row. This is row number 50. And this is where we stop using our dark green altogether. So I'm just gonna work the first couple of stitches in the dark green. Pull back on the light green. Now, you're going to snip your light green yarn. Don't panic. <laughs> We're gonna give it quite a, quite a long tail. So six or seven inches, uh, 15 to 17 centimeters there. So a nice long tail and just let it hang there while you finish the rest of row 50 with the dark green yarn. At the end of row 50, and that is 20 rows in total that include, if not are completely, dark green. So now you can take your scissors and snip your dark green yarn. You're done with the dark green for the rest of the canvas build. You want to fasten off and you can take a moment to weave that tail in back and forth across some of those stitches or when you start working row 51 you can work over top of it. But first let's deal with this little dangling green yarn right here. 
Grab your yarn needle, thread up that long tail, and bring it through to the side that's facing us here. This is the side of the blanket where you might be able to see the odd little bit of yarn showing through. It's not really that obvious, but we're going to try and keep it all on the same side. So what we're going to do in order to make sure that this doesn't come unraveled is that we're going to be very careful not to pull this too tightly. So you want this stitch right here to be about the same size as the ones on either side of it. And you get that by sort of pulling on this tail or pulling back on the stitch. So you want to make sure that that stitch is the same size as the one on the other, the other either side of it. Then you're going to take your needle and you're going to run your yarn needle underneath some of those stitches. Maybe five or six of them. Don't pull too tightly. Then you're going to double back over top of that last little loop. So you want to double back over top of one. Pull that yarn back through all the same stitches, but not so tightly that it shows or that it pulls. And then you're going to double back over top of the last little loop here. And you're going to go through as many stitches as it takes for the rest of that little tail of yarn to disappear. So however many that is, is however many you need to run it under. And if you're using really slippery, slippery yarn, you might want to do this four times, so back and forth four times as opposed to only three. But if you're using yarn that's like mine, that should lock it into place. Make sure you kind of pull on those stitches so that nothing gets pulled out of whack and it should look nice and neat and even. There we go. And don't, don't forget, when you get back to this stitch right here, it should look like all the other ones, so it shouldn't be confusing. But don't forget to use it. You should still have 108 stitches in every row. Okay, row 51. We are officially beginning the light green section, even though we've used light green in four of the rows before this. We're going to join our yarn. So we're going to create a slip knot on our hook with our light green yarn. I'm going to work over top of both my tails to weave them in as I go. We're going to join our yarn in the top of the last stitch that we worked with the dark green. Join with a slip stitch. Chain three. Chain three counts as a double crochet. And you're just going to double crochet in each stitch all the way across. Make sure that you work the last stitch of every row in the top of the chain three from the row before. And you're going to work 16 rows of solid light green double crochet. So row 51 all the way up to row 66 will be light green, plain old double crochet back and forth. And I'll see you after another 16 rows. All right, I have just finished row 66 and I wanted you to see what this looks like before we head on. So this is row 66. It's the 16th row of the official light green section. And when you're looking at your blanket, so you've just finished your last row on the left side, the little steps between the dark green and the light green areas should be in an ascending pattern to the left. So row 56 of the blanket, if it's you've just finished it and put it down so it's on this side, your steps are ascending to the left. We're going to work one more solid row of double crochet in the light green before we do some more steps between the light green and the light blue, but I wanted to make sure we were all on the same page. So your little steps are ascending to the left. We're going to flip our work. So we're starting row 17 now, or row 67 of the blanket, and now your steps are ascending to the right. We're going to work one more solid row of double crochet in the light green all the way across and then we're going to start changing up the colors between light green and light blue. All right, we finished row 67. We are beginning row 68 now. So your hook and yarn are on this side. This should be the widest part of the light green section so far. We are going to chain three to begin. That counts as a double crochet just like every row. Skip that already counted for stitch. Work your next double crochet into the next stitch. We're going to work 
a total of 81 light green stitches all the way across. So that includes your chain three. You want 81 stitches and then we're going to switch up to light blue. All right, we're 81 stitches into row 68. We're going to pause here, pull up on our loop briefly. We're going to switch now from light green to light blue. You should have 27 stitches left in this row and we're going to finish this row with the light blue. So we're going to make ourselves a slip knot. And just like we did before, we're going to join, we're going to treat this like a, a wrapped loop. So take it back off your hook, put your hook back in your green yarn and you can put that now on your hook. You're going to treat it like you've wrapped your yarn. So now you're going to go through the next stitch, pick up a loop, treat those first two loops as the first half of the double crochet and the last two loops as the last half of the double crochet. Pull gently on the light green yarn so that you don't completely get rid of that stitch because remember you have to use it, that is a stitch. I know it looks a little funny. You're just going to drop your light green to the back and now you're going to continue the rest of the row with your light blue. I'm going to work over top of my short tail. Of course you can just weave it in later if you find that easier. But you should have 27 stitches now in light blue for the rest of row 68. There's 27 stitches in light blue to finish off that row. We're going to chain three and turn our work. And now we're going to work the first 36 stitches in light blue of this next row. But I'm going to catch up with you at stitch number 27, just so I can remind you how to carry your green yarn forward so that it's where you need it when it's time to change color. Okay, there's stitch number 26. Remember you're including your chain three as a stitch. So stitch number 27 goes into that funny little stitch. Just pull back a little bit on that light green yarn if the stitch got a little long on you. There's number 27. You have nine more stitches in blue you wanna do, but you wanna make sure you carry your light green yarn so that it's where you need it to be when it's time to change colors. So just make sure you grab it so that you're working your light blue stitches over top of it. And just carry that light green yarn along the top of your work, and then it'll be right where you need it when it's time to change back. Okay, that's the 36th stitch in blue. We're now going to change back to light green. So you're just going to drop your light blue yarn, let it fall to the back, and we're going to switch back to green. So you're going to work the next stitch, careful not to get over top of your light blue, in green, just like that. Let that blue just fall to the back. And remember, if you're pulling on that light blue yarn just to make this stitch a little smaller, don't make it too small because you still want to be able to see it because you still need to use it. You have 72 stitches in total of light green to do, and that will finish this row. That finishes row 69. To begin row 70, we're going to chain three, turn our work. This blanket's getting pretty big. We're going to work 63 stitches in light green. That includes your chain three, and then we're going to switch back to blue. So I'll see you at stitch number 63. That's number 63 of the light green. That's all the light green we're going to do. So we're 63 stitches into row 70. The light green is now done. Snip your yarn. You only need to leave yourself, oh, give yourself a nice long tail because you want to weave it in back and forth a few times. So at least eight inches or 17 centimeters. And now we're going to switch back to the blue. So we're going to do that fun little cheat carry thing like we did before. We're going to pull our light blue yarn across to the bottom of our last stitch. Just kind of hold it there and then you're going to 
wrap it around your hook so don't keep it too tense or too tight but you're going to wrap it around your hook and then you're going to work a stitch over top of that light blue yarn so the first half and then the back half you can tug on that light green yarn but don't make that stitch too small because you're still going to need to use it when you're on your way back at the end of the next row so you can pull on that light blue carry yarn a little bit and now you can carry on working over top of that blue and finish the rest of row 70 in the light blue this is our little cheat and carry method here that's it for the light green we're going to finish row 70 we're going to weave in the short tail of the light green and then the rest of the blanket is in this beautiful sky blue All right, we finished row 70. I've pulled up on that loop. I've just flipped the blanket now and I've gone back and picked up my green tail with my yarn needle and just like we did before, we're going to weave it in. Now make sure that you haven't made that stitch, the one that you can control the size of, too small and make sure it's not too big. You're going to bring your yarn down to some of the same colored stitches and you want to make sure that you've woven it back and forth across these stitches at least three or four times because you don't want it to come undone. Don't pull too tightly because you don't want to pull your stitches out of alignment. You're going to hop over and double back through the same stitches pull too too tight and then do it again hop over and then I like to go even further the next time once you've woven in your short tail you can go back to crochet row 71 begins like every other row with a chain 3 you're going to double crochet in each stitch all the way across your last stitch will be worked into the top of the chain three from the row before and every row will still have 108 stitches. Rows 71 through row 90 will just be light blue double crochet. So you want 20 rows of solid blue double crochet. Every row has 108 stitches and I'll see you at the end of row 90. When you get to the end of row 90, you are done. You can snip your blue yarn, fasten off, leave a long enough tail that you can weave it in back and forth across the backs of the stitches of the last row, just like we did with the short tails we left on the colors as we were sort of changing colors throughout the dark and light green sections. You should have 20 solid rows of light blue and three rows where your light blue and light green are crossing over. In total, your blanket is 90 rows tall and we are now done the canvas part of our blanket and we'll be able to move on to the next parts of the 2019 Folk Art Calendar Blanket. And there we go, canvas is all done. Make sure you weave in all of your short tails before we progress, just so they're not in the way, and make sure they're nice and snug so they don't want to come undone. I hope you guys are having fun so far. We are now finished this part of the blanket. We can start adding to it now as the project progresses throughout the year. That's it for this week. We hope we see you guys again real soon on the Jane and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week, everybody. <laughs> Bye.